An insurance illustration is what your agent gives you to help you understand a policy, but you'll probably find it a little confusing and overwhelming. It's not easy to digest the complex information presented in these sometimes up to 40 or more page documents, and every carrier's illustrations are organized differently. Interest rates and policy charges are only two of the many factors that can affect your policy's actual performance. The timing and the amount of any premiums you pay, loans or surrenders you take, and policy benefit changes have a really big effect on your policy values. This is a Securian illustration issued by Minnesota Life. I have either blocked out confidential information or deleted it altogether. This IUL is, of course, structured for maximum cash accumulation with the lowest death benefit the IRS will allow, with an increasing death benefit. This information and the initial death benefit are calculated on your age, sex, and health status. In this case, a 43-year-old female non-smoker with a $20,000 annual premium. Keep in mind that you may be 43 years old, but the illustration indicates you are 44, and that is because most life insurance companies calculate your premium by using what is called the nearest age rule. All life insurance illustrations are hypothetical and not a contract, so the values you'll see in this are not guaranteed. I'm going to skip over this section because it's repeated on page 24 alongside the guaranteed values. And I would rather show you both guaranteed and non-guaranteed side by side. The guaranteed values column is the legally required disclosure of a worst case scenario that from policy inception, you will be credited the minimum interest, which is usually zero, for all policy years and also be charged maximum charges. Securian, however, has a 2% crediting rate, which is kind of like a 2% floor. Of course, if there were actually zero interest for all policy years, the world economy would be going through some kind of Armageddon or something, and that is unlikely to happen. The alternative crediting rate is a midpoint, and it's typically 50% of the expenses and interest crediting between the current and guaranteed assumptions. Though the average annual return of the S&P 500 since its inception in 1957 is roughly 8%, the maximum crediting rate that is allowed to be shown on your illustration as per actuarial guidelines AG49 is in this case 5.43%, which is on page 6. None of these scenarios are likely to happen, but it's important to have an idea of what could happen. This illustration involves three variables, cash value, also called accumulation value, cash surrender value, and the death benefit. Cash value is the amount of cash available in your policy that you can access in the form of loans or withdrawals. You can see in year one, the annual premium is $20,000, but the cash value is $18,051. And that is because the cash value is reduced by the surrender penalties. The surrender value is the amount you would receive if you were to terminate the policy after the free look period, which is usually, it ranges between 7 to 30 days, just depending on what state you're in. In year one, you would receive $315 if you decided to cancel your policy. The accumulation value equals the amount of all the premiums you paid, minus administrative charges, monthly deductions, and any withdrawals, plus the accumulated interest. The death benefit differs from the initial death benefit because this illustration shows an increasing death benefit. You're not buying more life insurance. The death benefit is simply the initial death benefit plus the accumulation value or cash value 
And this is what your beneficiary will get if you were to pass away. So 606,243 plus cash value of 18,051 equals 624,294. In some illustrations, the number is exact and in others it is not. In year 10, the cash value and the surrender value are the same because there are no more surrender charges if you were to terminate your policy. And they will stay the same for the duration of your policy until you take out a loan or begin taking your tax-free retirement income. Then you will see your cash value, your surrender value, and death benefit change due to the policy loans and loan interest. In the year 22, at the age of 65, she begins to take her tax-free retirement income. So you can see how that affects the cash value, surrender value, and death benefit. Of course, if she's taking a participating loan, this $55,000 is still in her account earning interest. At the age of 70, she runs out of money in the guaranteed column because she's only been receiving 2% interest for 27 years. And at the age of 74, she runs out of money because she's only been receiving 3.25% for 31 years. But you can see she's doing just fine with the illustrated crediting rate of 5.43%. So now let's go back where we started and continue. Here you can see that the illustrated account allocation is 100% this balanced indexed account, S&P Prism Index, one year point to point uncapped. More on that later. And you have living benefits for terminal and chronic illness. You also have overloan protection, which prevents an outstanding policy loan from terminating your policy, even if the cash value isn't enough to cover the policy charges. And there's no charge for this until it is exercised. And I, I encourage you to read the entire illustration. These pages go into detail on how indexing and crediting works and the various indexes to choose from. But I do want to point out that though there are several indices to choose from, the PRISM uncapped index is recommended. And that is because the S&P PRISM index is exclusive to Securian's uncapped indexed accounts because of its low cost uncapped index allocations. So though you have other options, the one or three year PRISM uncapped index gives you higher crediting than the other two. As an example, with the one year point to point uncapped PRISM index with 105% participation rate, if the market rose 10%, you would get 105% of that gain. So 10.5%. If you've not watched my video on life insurance loans or interest crediting, you need to watch it up here so you can understand the difference between the different kinds of loans and how crediting works. And I'll put a link to that below. A fixed loan is less expensive than an indexed loan. But with an indexed loan, otherwise known as a participating loan, your money never leaves your account. It continues to earn interest and participate in the growth of your money. With a variable loan, you never know what your rate will be. You can also withdraw money from your policy's cash value by requesting a partial surrender, but that reduces your cash value and death benefit, and you will pay taxes on that withdrawal. Many people choose cash value life insurance for the tax deferred component that comes along with it. But what happens if you contribute too much toward your cash value? That's when Uncle Sam steps in. If your payments toward the cash value on your policy exceed federal limitations, your policy is no longer considered a traditional life insurance policy. It becomes a modified endowment contract or MEC with serious tax implications and restrictions. And once a life insurance policy becomes a modified endowment contract, its status can never be reversed. But you will most likely be contacted by your insurance company 
if a premium payment exceeds the seven paid limit. This securian policy is set up to avoid next status by the guideline premium test and the cash value accumulation test in year one only. And here they tell you the maximum premium to avoid a MEC. All right, let's talk about charges. The securian illustration didn't illustrate the charges. So this is a Symmetra illustration on a 34-year-old non-smoking male with a $5,000 annual premium. The premium expense charge includes state and local taxes, and those are deducted from your premium before it is applied to your policy and is applied as long as you are paying premiums. Once you begin taking your tax-free retirement income, this charge goes away. Cost of insurance covers the base cost of providing the insurance, which is dependent on your age, gender, health, underwriting class, and death benefit to help cover the cost of issuing, underwriting, and distributing the policy. Administrative charges pay the cost of maintaining the policy, including accounting and record. For the first five to 10 years, is pretty heavy. And is the cost to set up the system, set up fees, commissions, paid out, etc. Interest crediting. Symmetra also has its own proprietary index, and they give you three different options with their indices, the base, core, and select options. The base strategies have lower participation rates than the other strategies, but they guarantee the payment of an additional index credit, which is applied to your account value at the end of every point-to-point segment. The core strategies offer you the option to select from three index strategies, and the select strategies are available at an extra cost of 1% and allow you to potentially capture higher participation. With this illustration, the interest credited is based on, in this case, the blended S&P and JP Morgan index core option to your point to point. Because this is a blended index and the S&P has a current participation rate of 90% and the JP Morgan has a current participation rate of 155%, if you average the two, it comes to 122.5%. So if the market went up by the maximum illustrated rate of 5.92%, you would be credited 7.25%, which is 5.92% plus 122.5%, that equals 7.25%. Interest credited here isn't exact, but it's roughly estimated. Some illustrations will be exact and some will not. Once you start receiving an income, you'll be paying interest on that loan. Your policy loans and interest owed on the loans are all figured into this illustration. And you can see how that affects your cash value and death benefit. The interest is based on a participating loan at 4.75%. So here he takes his $19,744 tax-free income He pays $1,086 in interest on that participating loan. Then we deduct $258 for the cost of insurance and $180 in administrative charges. And then add back in the $18,401 in interest he is earning from his policy investments. And we get roughly $279,446. Sometimes this is exact and sometimes is not. In this case, it comes to 279409 This is where the applicant signs a statement that they understand the non-guaranteed elements are subject to change, and the agent signs as well. Well, I hope this helps you to understand your IUL or annuity illustration. If you are interested in purchasing an annuity or IUL, please see the link below uh, for the application. I will structure it properly for maximum cash accumulation 
with the least amount of fees. Of course, annuities don't have fees unless you add a rider. And as always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video.